Media Challenge Initiative. Welcome, Abbas. Thank you, Josephine. All right, and uh, next to him is uh, Mr. Douglas Opio, the Executive Director of Federation of Uganda Employers. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Josephine. All right, and finally, Emily Aneno, who has 14 years of vast experience in human resource management. She is currently the Country Human Resource Manager of AMREF Health Africa. Welcome, Emily. Thank you very much. All right, well, let's say it as it is. In our conversation today, I want us to play a clip of one of our interns here at NTV, and she's um, openly sharing her, what her experience has been like and what she thought internship would be vis a vis what it actually is. Let's have that quick play. Because you can sue me. I don't have evidence, now you have to keep quiet. My name is Olivia Komigisha, third year student, Makere University, studying Bachelor of Journalism and Communication. I'm doing my internship with NTV Uganda as a news reporter, English. Uh, my experience as an intern has been really intense training, um, intense learning, uh, trying to perfect my different capabilities, trying to discover who I really am. the challenges uh, interns face, I'll not talk about myself in particular, but um, the different friends I've had, they talk about uh, being overworked. Uh, sometimes when they get to their intern pl internship places, their bosses go and leave and they let the interns do the work. And then the other thing would be fatigue because um, it's a whole thing to transform from the student kind of setup to you know, the workforce. So sometimes you find your fatigue because um, this is not what you've been doing on a daily, but as time moves on, you get used to it. Uh, a day at work and a day at school. At school, of course, you'd wake up in the morning, take a shower, have breakfast. Maybe let's say your lectures are in the afternoon. You rest a little at one. You go to campus, study, come back, maybe watch a series or a movie, and sleep. But a day at work, you wake up early in the morning, you have to be at work by 7.30. Um, then you attend the newsroom meeting, you go to the field, compile your story, come, do the scripting, you know, do the voicing, edit your story, and you leave at work, because me, I'm doing the 9 p.m. news, uh, sometimes I leave work at 8.39, so that's the day at work. If the input of an intern really contributes to the growth or continuity of an organization, then in one way or the other, they should be appreciated. Do I pay internship fee? Yes. At school, we pay internship fee, but um, getting a placement where I am right now, I did not pay any fee. I feel like the theory they give us in school is really too much. And if they try to lessen that theory and maybe they make it practical. Because journalism is really a practical course, then instead of giving someone notes, you know, they fill notebooks per notebook, it doesn't make sense. I think it makes more sense if they are given this intense practical work. Because when you get to the workforce, it's everything is practical. So you find out of a hundred the theory they've given you, you'll just apply like 10% and 90% is practical. I've gained a lot from my internship and all these stories that you see air on, on, on TV, I edit them for myself and um, sometimes from the help of my elders that I found at the job, uh, let's say sometimes they see you fidgeting, they try to find out what's wrong, where, like, what you're not doing right and if there is any mistake, if the story has aired with mistakes, they are going to come and tell you this, this is where the mistake was, but if you do it like this, then it's going to be a better story. A companies should take on interns because these are young, enthusiastic people who are still fresh, who have a lot in mind, who are creative, and all they want is to contribute to the company's growth. And you know, try to, to, to lay a background for themselves, you know, a foundation for themselves. So 
all organizations should take on in, turn, in turns and when they take them on they should be given an opportunity to, to you know to expose who they are to expose what they can do to show what they can do best and you know where necessary where they can improve so the kind of internship i've received i am very sure that i'm going to go on with journalism because i feel it's what i want and i feel that's where my strength is i do not imagine myself in an office seated doing public relations so uh, my I'm taking on journalism from now onwards. Stands at. <laughs> hey, sorry. I ran. The third stanza of the Makere University anthem says, "Do not forget through all the years that you've gone through the gates of ah uh, ah uh, uh, the Jeff." Well, that's Olivia Komgisha sharing her experience in turning with us here at NTV. <laughs> Does that bring back any memories? Was any of you an intern? Yes, I was. You were an intern? Yes, I was. What was it like? I was privileged to get uh, to join an organization that really valued young talent. And so my experience was quite identifying with that one of Olivia. I remember I had a, an HR director who would challenge us, who would believe and say, you can do it. So. I do remember one time he, when he went on leave, he left a note and delegated me as the HR director. Of course, I freaked out. How old were you at that point? <laughs> How old were you at that point? Uh, I'm not certain I want to reveal my age. <laughs> 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 okay. That was uh, 2002 when I was at university. Okay. Yeah. And you were an HR director at that point? No, I was in the I HR director. Exactly. And to me, it was a great opportunity to know that someone has your back, believes in you, and knows that you're able to do more than you think. Are you and doing the same for the young Yes, I am. I'm passionate about building young talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I wasn't lucky enough to have an opportunity for internship. What I did was uh, I started work with a consultant who was mainly doing research work. I think he influenced my career choice. I did development studies, but uh, for the past uh, nine or so years, I worked in the research field. Uh, so this was while you were at the university? Yes, so while I was at the university, <coughs> and even immediately I finished, I basically continued with it. Okay. Was a private consultant, basically I saw uh, proprietorship, but it was uh, very important to my career. Oh, I was having a bust for last because I knew, I know he didn't do internship, <laughs> but I know that who he is now is as a result of that misfortune or fortune. Yeah. So what happened? So I think Olivia is really an ideal you know, scenario for her to get such an internship opportunity. For me, it was basically stopping at the reception. I didn't even go. How many receptions? <laughs> Just one, but that gave me the experience because I walked to the reception and I asked for an internship and I had a letter and everything and the answer was you needed a recommendation from someone inside and I knew that that's not the process. I come with my letter, you either have or you don't have, then I had to go back because I didn't have any connection inside which is basically very common in the industry. I don't want to know which industry that is, it might point to where I am but so what, what happened then after this? So I th uh, most people know about the Media Challenge Initiative, but that's really the story behind it. Um, internship gone bad. I went back as I was walking back to uh, university. I started to think about how many other young people go through the same challenge, which is lack of strategic connection to get them into internships that they need. And I figured that the idea would be to basically bridge the gap between the university student and the employer. So mm -hmm. that's how we started the Inter-University Media Challenge with the team that now I'm working with. And since then, since 2012 up to now, we have really been able to do amazing things, including having Olivia with you. Okay. 
So Olivia came from the media challenge. I will oh, just okay. come clean. Since <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your policy on internships? So when they come to, for example, I'm like, what happens? Well, for us, it's very competitive. It's like any other job opportunity. So when we, because we have an online system where everyone applies. So when they apply, we look out at the different projects that are available. And then we look at the people that have applied, which, which, which courses align to which project. So we also liaise with the different project managers to see do they have opportunity. Because the whole essence is that we need someone who will mentor, who will have time okay. for the intern. So we do not take in just for the sake of taking in. If there's no manager who is ready to take on, to work with this person, then we'd rather not take at that period. So that is one intern for, so one manager for one intern? Yes. You just bring a whole bunch of five people and say they're in your department? Not exactly. Okay. Yeah. But of course there are other departments, like for example finance. We can take two or more because they assign them to different prog uh, accountants, so they have time with them. But for example, HR, I cannot take more than one to really have good quality time with them. Do you think internships work? Do you think they're working? Douglas? Yes, I, I do think internships uh, work very much because at my organization, what we start with is also to let the young person set their expectations. And then also the expectation is set on our side. Uh, so, so once... So hold on. So an intern comes in the first day. Yes. You sit them down and say, what are your expectations of us? What do you want to learn? Let me explain that process because that's the process we call the induction uh, phase. Okay. Yeah. So usually before you, you come to us, somebody will either call you or will send an email uh, to you letting you know what you'll do within the first one week. Wow. So when you report uh, on the first day at work, we are careful not to overload you with so many things. So the first uh, day at work is basically administrative issues, yeah, letting you know where you're going to sit, uh, meeting your colleagues, uh, getting to know people basically, and then uh, but we're not signing sending you the to. Interns to make tea no, and no, okay. at least uh, not <laughs> not at Sometimes. our workplace. So Sometimes. once. Yeah. <laughs> uh, once uh, that uh, phase uh, passes, which is basically the first day is spent just on administrative uh, issues, then on the second day you get to your department. That's when you get to understand a bit more what your department does, uh, what are the goals of the department, uh, and then generally whom will you be working with. Uh, and then after that phase when you understand the organization, you understand what uh, your department uh, does, and then we give you now the expectations from the side of the organization. So you we let would you have set understood. yours and then we set ours for you. Yes, we so you, you, this is what we expect of you, but also we want to uh, know what you expect of us so that you can maximize learning during that period. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's take a short break and we'll be right back. Welcome back. We're coming to you live from the Kampala Serena Conference Center Nile Room, and we're talking about internships today. But before we go on, I'd just take a look at some comments that were sent on social media. I asked on my platforms um, for people's experiences when they were interns, and somebody says, unlike many interns who are usually overworked, I didn't get to do any work. It was, don't touch that, don't touch this, I'll let you know when I have an assignment for you, and the assignment never came. So I woke up every day just to wait for random plot or to pass time. Um, we have quite a number of comments of uh, really complaints uh, from people who interned at one point or the other. But then somebody else said, my first internship made me gain perspective in my life. I actually worked, not photocopying and making tea. It was real work in files, in the field, do, doing focus group discussions, all that and more. My second internship, on the other hand, I had to beg for work. Well, that, that conversation continues on our social media platforms. If you'd like to have your say on what your internship experience was like, please head over there. My next question to you guys is, so hundreds of young people bring their CVs, right? Mm -hmm. Like a bus, some of them will you know, stop at that. That the only opportunity they have is to stop at the reception. How do you pick from the hundreds of documents that you're going to find there as the HR people, 
how do you choose who gets to get in and who doesn't? I know that some people, I've looked at some of them, some people bring the form that the university gave them, they just put their name on the form and drop that one there. Others go ahead and write an application, attach their PA, I don't know, PLE results, there's <laughs> four. Some people go the extra mile. How do you choose? Well, um, people who have actually applied show you that they're very serious and they, they're focused, they know what they want. Uh, on our side, we rarely take those who only bring us the university later. later because that's an obligation of the university. The question is, for you, what do you want? So even if you come along with the university later, we ask you go back, write your application. We want to know what is your motivation? Why do you want to do the internship? What do you expect to learn from us? And why specifically? our organization. So for AMREF Health Africa, we have even a form that has a series of questions that we make people, the different they interns that who have, who have applied, we make them feel. So when we look at the different responses, then we can qualify, as I, I already said, depending on which space is there. And also when we look at, for example, if it's a maternal health project, we can easily take someone who is doing something related with public health, and all that. But then also what we do is when we take you on, we give them what we call a placement letter, just like an offer letter to say we've been given a placement, effective this date, you're expected with A, B, C, D. So on that date when they come on board, they actually have one week's orientation. And this orientation is the same orientation that all employees go through. They go through the HR manual, we take them through everything and they sign code, um, the code of conduct just like any other employee. Okay. Then we also introduce them to the different departments. So, so the next the week after yeah. is when yeah. we now set, we call them deployment. We deploy them to their respective place where they're supposed to be attached. So let's hear from some of the people in our, in our audience and, and get their thoughts on internship, thoughts and questions, yes. Thank you, Josephine. Uh, my name is Juliana Kayaga from Strategic Engagement. Um, one of the concerns that we have right now is that interns are not paid. Many people do not want to pay interns because they don't see any value coming out of them. But the problem goes back to the organizations. What have you put in place to make sure you get value out of this particular intern? We've done a, a study of skills gap analysis and realized that actually people graduate and they don't have employability skills. So during the internship program, are you as an organization able to put in place a growth process that is actually going to impel this person to grow, to bring about results? Can you put, a place, uh, can you put in place performance agreements for them to say, you know what, this is what you're going to deliver, so they can actually get a, a feel of the actual organizational environment? So the question goes back to the organizations. How are we going to be able to get value from this enthusiastic and energetic and innovative space? Okay. Thank you. Internship payment. Actually, some, one of the persons who commented on, on, um, on social media said they, they were working up to 11 p.m. and they were never even getting transport, you know. What is this thing about payment? Should interns be paid? Yes, uh, I think in, in terms maybe not pay the salary, but they should get uh, basic facilitation. What we encourage employers to do, some um, uh, young people even find difficulty just reaching the workplace. They don't have uh, transport to come to the workplace. Some don't even have uh, accommodation because they have gotten internship placement uh, far away from home. So we encourage employers to not to pay a salary, but to give basic facilitation. So if I was an employer who didn't want to pay, I would probably go through the interview process with them and say, where do you live? And Absolutely. then if you live fine, I'll say, we, we can't take you. W yeah, there has to be right. something um, like a give and take. So Olivia is saying in her story that if you appreciate the intern, give them some kind of appreciation for, for the work that they do. Abbas? I think the, there are two ways to look at it. There are some organizations that are able to facilitate or, or pay. So that can be a small organization or a startup that is able to, that is not able to, you know, pay or pay salaries or pay stipend to an intern. And that can be understandable. But there are also big organizations that have structures and budgets. So I, I would imagine some, an organization like AMREF Sh yes, should be able to put in <laughs> place you know, a, a facility like that where 
an intern can get a lunch, can get you know transport, transport. and or even when they are going to the field, um, it's important that th there is that appreciation. For and uh, and I think also the other thing is at the end of the at the end of the internship. You may not be able to give them um, like a monthly stipend, but if you're able to appreciate uh, at the end of the month. But let's define appreciation yeah. because appreciation could be a certificate. Absolutely. Yeah. It could be a coupon letter for you know a letter exactly. of a letter of recommendation. We're going to call that appreciation. Okay. I, yes. I would what's appreciation? I would say they are. In this case, we're talking about money. We're talking about payment. That. If you if someone is going to go to the field, they need transport. So you don't expect them to just walk there, and for example, get a story. But if I'm giving you transport yeah. and I am giving you lunch, what then is appreciation? So the uh, I mean the other level of appreciation which they are talking about could be a recommendation letter at the end. It can also be an appreciation certificate that you can offer, but it can also be a package, kind of an envelope that you provide to an intern after the end of internship to say thank you so much for working here. A, a package could include a All flyer these about our organization, a calendar <laughs> for the year. <laughs> <Right. laughs> <Dairy. laughs> Let's take some more questions from, from the audience. Yes. Yeah, thank Who you so, so much, Madam Josephine. I'm Norma Slokrodima from Campus International University. Basically, my concern is about the relationship between the mentor and an intern. Okay. Should we call it a master-servant relationship whereby an intern makes a mistake in the company, and uh, should we say that uh, an intern is the one responsible for the liability or the mentor? That is my question to you. Then. That that's a good one. S servant, slave and servant relation, master servant relationship. Yes, Who wants uh, to take it, Douglas? It's it's not a master servant kind of relationship. This this is uh, a learning environment, so to say, and it's not uh, an issue of simply apportioning blame for damages at the workplace, usually employers take insurance. So if employers have taken insurance, that means damaged properties can be paid for, whether it's a computer, whether it's a machine, or any other facilities at, at the workplace. But if a company hasn't taken insurance, employees generally do not take personal liability, unless it was deliberate. If, I, if I had an destroyed. intern and yeah. I sent her to the field with camera work, I mean cameras and things, and they're quite expensive, yeah. and something happened to the cameras, what happens? That's a loss to the company. Usually you wouldn't expect uh, the intern to, to pay for that To cost. pay for that. Yeah. If I sent an intern out and they got into an accident, what happens? Actually, the law defines uh, that as still part of your place of work. Even when you're coming from home to work and you got an accident on the road, you're considered to have gotten an accident at the work. The line of duty. The same thing if you are going back home. So in this particular case, the employee, the intern would still be at the place of work. Only Is, that now this is working. One of in the, the reasons field. why some organizations are a bit skeptical about taking interns? Of course, there are organizations that uh, might not want to take uh, certain liabilities, uh, given the kind of machines involved. You don't want uh, a trainee playing around with it. Some of them also have insurance policies that prohibit that, basically. You can't use an intern, otherwise the insurance company won't pay for that uh, loss. So there is a limit to which uh, a trainee can use certain facilities at the workplace. Okay. Uh, uh, Emily was lucky to be a uh, HR director first day or uh, first time doing internship, but uh, in real life that doesn't happen uh, really. There are certain things, your, <laughs> your experience, I mean for us she was very lucky, I should say that. But generally uh, most employers wouldn't take you too far before you have learned the basics. That's a little scary because then what is the point of internships? Because then if Olivia came to intern with us, then we're not able to allow her to touch a camera, allow her to touch a computer. She'd probably just be sitting in meetings and looking at us. Maybe let me clarify something. Those are basic tools of work. And the loss on the employer is, is minimal. So computers, uh, all these basic gadgets, cameras, uh, no employer would uh, prohibit you from using it. But there are certain things. There's a lot of hmms from the audience mm. because they, they disagree. Yes, Emily. Okay. Uh, in 
my view, the relationship shouldn't be master-servant. No, it's not. Because internship is a mutual thing. Yes. Here is this young person coming to learn. And it is our responsibility, whoever has been assigned to mentor this person, is supposed to give the best learning. Because this person is coming to discover. And they are prone to make mistakes because they don't know. So if they make mistakes, they learn from their mistakes. They need to know that, okay, you've made this mistake, but this is how we are supposed to, to correct it. In aspects of uh, the group personal accident, it's our responsibility because that's why in AMREF Health Africa, we give the offer letters to really show that you are engaged with, with us. With so we are responsible. As long as you're within our jurisdiction, we are responsible. So that letter is really, really important. Yeah. Okay, let's take another short break and we'll be right back. very very quickly running and I want to talk about quite a few things. There have been complaints and somebody actually sent this to me and said I need you to have them talk about it. Mm -hmm. Employers discriminating against particular universities. So when Makere sends interns, yeah we'll take them. UCU, yeah we'll take them and a couple of other universities. Then some universities, their people never get internships. Why? Are they blacklisted for some reason and they don't know the university doesn't know, the students don't know? Why are they picky? What influences that decision? Abbas, do you want to tell us? Yeah, I, I mean, I wanted to jump in more like from probably a victim side. Of <laughs> <laughs> and because I was in an institution when I was doing journalism, and um, I realized that in most cases, there were specific universities that I won't mention that would get internships. And it was really hard to understand why some of this kind of thing was happening until when we started our work and we started to do some research and realized that there, is, there are times, I think, when we had some institutions really performing very well. So it's about performance. And, and, and their students would come in an environment and create impact. So that would kind of create bias. And over time, you had either you know, managers or human resource or editors or anyone who would say, we love students from this university because of this level and we love people from this university because of this and this and this and from the work that we've been doing in the universities we try really to make sure that this is also understood so that the performance is at the same level that it's really hard for you yeah, to, to, choose, to choose like or to prefer to have like preferences okay well, I've yeah. seen um, we had a, s a secondary school that came to us recently and said we'd like to give you a senior I think it was senior four senior five students for them to do a two weeks sort of internship program with you. Should internships start earlier than university? Yes, uh, I think it internships should start earlier. As early as what? As early as uh, even primary school. Okay. Yeah, because uh, it's about making a career choice. So bring your child to work day. It's, it's possible, it could just be a day at a workplace. That's, that's enough to influence you perception of where you want to go with your life. Okay. Some people come to internship and you perhaps realize I don't want to be a, a journalist. Well, want Olivia to wanted a, to a be lawyer. a journalist at the end of it. Don't bias people who are listening and right. <laughs> okay. their practice. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I'm just giving uh, an yeah, example because we are in, in a forum with so many journalists, of course, uh, you're doing quite well here. They're happy. They like journalists. <laughs> but uh, what I'm trying to say is that it influences your perception. Y you then envision the kind of person you want to be. And that can uh, happen quite uh, early. Okay. Could just be when you're very young. That's usually when we form our opinion. I've told you for my case, I had the opportunity to do my first work with a gentleman who was a researcher, a sole proprietorship. But my career since then has been in research throughout, not until recently when I become, uh, became the executive director. So it can have a huge bearing on on how your life turns So the earlier out. the better. Yes. Emily? I would slightly disagree. Okay. In the sense that for these other classes, especially the secondary level, I would encourage more of career guidance so that they get to know what kind of, the kind of courses they are going for and what kind of jobs they'll get at the end of the day. So the internship bit, it's very difficult to get an S4 
to come, for example, in our setting of the health, health sector, it becomes hard for you, for them to really get a grasp of everything. So to me, the, you, you the university bit, especially because for us we take on from second year, because that way it uh, helps a student to align. Right. Abbas? I think I, it's different because I prefer that we really start early. Mm -hmm. I have a friend called Benji, he runs this boundless program and they are equipping teenagers with practical skills to start early in computer, you know, CV rating and everything. And I think the moment you're exposed at an early age, when you have like this passion of becoming a journalist, you run through. If you're able to come and spend, you know, like a week or a day here, even if you're just watching or even if you, they're just sending you to photocopy something, at that time, that's really important. And if you're not able to do, th the reason why we're having high levels of, you know, like s lack of skills is because people start late when you pick up at the university to go to the to, to go to look for an internship sometimes it's really really late and Still and, late. and by the time if i send you people in your organization and you find them lacking that's how the biases come in so for me i think the it would be really better. a great idea to have such a policy in place where we start okay. early well let's take one or two questions from the audience yes thank you so much mm. and emily my name is Clinton Tumanya, and I'm a journalism student from uh, Uganda Christian University. Now, I'm in my third year, my final year, and this is the time when we get to do our supervised internship. Now, gender favoritism is something that uh, is a public secret. I applied uh, in two organizations for my internship. That's uh, NTV and one other organization. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm glad that I'm currently an intern here at NTV Uganda. But the other organization where I applied, uh, there's a gentleman who was receiving our letters. He kept on quashing my papers. He threw them away. And I probably thought maybe my CV wasn't good. Maybe I didn't have the qualification that they wanted, which was fine. But then uh, a classmate, a female, came to me and said, uh, help me with my application, which I did. And uh, that wasn't bad because he accepted her one day after. Two days after, two <laughs> more girls were accepted, <laughs> and I still thought maybe this organization only wants females. But then a week after, my classmate who had, uh, had helped uh, called me and said that the gentleman that had helped her get the placement was in her, in her inbox requesting to meet her private hours, private arrangement to discuss business. Okay. So my question is, and this goes to CEOs and uh, executive directors and human resource managers, uh, is internship shifting from uh, helping students or extorting them and getting, uh, taking advantage of them? Thank All you. right. Thank you, Clinton. That question went to CEOs, human resource managers, and uh, what? <laughs> and directors. <laughs> it didn't come to me. Please tell us. Yeah. Um, in my view, every organization should have very clear safeguarding policies that protect <coughs> students or vulnerable people from harm harassment and all other kinds of things. Because if the safeguarding policies are in place, the student will come on board, know that these are my limits and this is what ex is expected of me. And if should anything happen to me, I know where to report. So to me, it is very, very pertinent. But then about the gender thing, yes, some, some organizations, they might have gotten more gentlemen and they now they need to balance up. But then that should not be the initial aspect. Qualification and competence is the entry measure before you go and choose whether you need a lady or, or a, a gentleman. All right, another, the final question. Yes, please. Oh, yes, the microphone. Uh, thank you, Ms. Josephine. My name is Okun Ronald from Kampala International University. Uh, my question goes, we have seen more people uh, going for organizations to make in turn but then, uh, should we say, are they given rights? If they are given such a right, are they given uh, to say that you should go and work up, uh, up here, your limit is here and all that? So okay. if they have rights, sh uh, how are they Enforced. governed? Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, in terms of rights, just like any other people at the workplace, and these are safeguarded also by the employment law. So there is no discrimination. Actually, the law is very clear on that. I guess the question then is, do they know the rights, uh, the interns? First of all, I explain the, the process when an intern comes on. 
At the beginning, they're introduced to the policies at the workplace. But this is the assumption that every organization does that, that. because mm -hmm. some interns get to organizations and the organization HR hands them over to departments and they're forgotten. Absolutely. You know, they are told, don't touch this, don't touch. So no one inducts them or tells them. Absolutely. And that's uh, what we still need to work on. Uh, that, that I must admit. Not every workplace, despite the existence of the law, of course there are still violations of the law. And at the Federation of Uganda Employers, that's our core work, to try and sensitize employers on the labor laws. That's a continuous work, basically. All right. We have uh, websites that you can uh, check. Uh, we also do it, uh, what we call general sensitization. All right, Douglas, um, since you're talking about what you'd like to sensitize us about, we have about f four minutes and like each of you to say something. So I'll start with you. Okay. What would you like somebody listening to this to take home from this conversation? I would like uh, especially the employers to take the issue of internship seriously. And that implies you have to have your workplace policy on internship. So you're very clear with uh, what you intend to do uh, when an intern comes. And you're very clear with your expectations what are the learning objectives? Uh, because internships is basically very good for the employers. I like what uh, Juliana said, uh, said uh, at, at the very beginning. It's an opportunity for them to spot talent. It's an opportunity to get ambassadors for their companies, their organizations. So uh, it's good for them to prepare adequately for internship. All right, thank you very much. And ambassadors, you speak. There's a gentleman in the corner that I really wanted to hear from. I don't know if we have a microphone and can take it to him very quickly as Abbas makes his remarks. Yes. Yeah, so I I'm looking at two things. The first one is the university. Um, how is the university um, preparing the students to go for internship? Do we have an internship office that really coordinates uh, internships in each faculty to make sure that by the time people leave, they have some of these, you know, like a, j a job description or an offer letter from the organization? Because there is a huge gap between the, the university sending you people and then you giving maybe um, the student an offer letter and that doesn't ever get to the university. Okay. So at that level... What yes. I would like to actually also yeah. understand is when you take back your letter, I mean your, your report, your internship report, do they go through it? Should it be a thing that informs the university that either the way we teach is working as opposed to what the practical is? Do you know if they do that? So I, ideally that's how it should be, but I don't think that's done across the field. So my, my point is that there may be some universities that are really, really out there doing like supervision of their interns and everything, but there are a bunch of others, many, that are not doing that, and okay. that's where we have the problem. So looking at how the university is preparing for the internship program and then coordinating with organizations to make sure that the expectations are very clear that we have that connection there so that by the time the student comes to the organization, really everything is clear, the laws are understood. And, and someone is following up. Yes. All right. Thank you, Abbas. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks, Joseph. My name is Joseph Mujao. I'm a human resources manager's association of Uganda and uh, Precision HR. I'd like to talk about the value of internship for the long-term health of the organization. All right, and you have one minute to do that yeah. because my time is done. Thank you. Now, if we don't have interns for, let's say, two or three years in a row, you'll not have people operating your booms, you'll not have camera operators, you won't have editors. The long-term health of the organization is chalked. So that's how important internship is. It builds the talent pipeline from the banks. The universities are the banks, the talent banks. So as they come in, they get onto uh, the organization organizations, they get the skills, they get the training, they get the competencies, and they help to fast track. In fact, among the interns, those who work in my organization right now are all former interns whom I've worked with in the past. Right. And among interns, you can actually have people going all the way up to ED or CEO positions if they were handled very well through the talent pipeline, through the development process. All right. Thank you very much. Emily, just wrap up in a few seconds. When we're done. Internship is important as, as a Joseph has already said, every organization needs to encourage people to come on board. But also as an organization, we have a responsibility so that the students get value for their time with us. They, are, they, they, they have a right to be protected. They have a right to be in the organization. Secondly, the, each organization and also to the students out there, make sure you have an offer letter. 
that way you will know that you have an attachment to this organization. Because if you don't have any letter that has officially been given to you, then you don't belong. Yeah. And also I encourage people, go through the right channels. Don't use the back door. And that's why you see we end up, you end up being harassed, you end up being taken for business meetings, which are not necessary. All right. Thank yeah. you all so much and all of the studio audience for participating. Well, that brings us to the end of this show. Our time is fast spent. Coming up is NTV Weekend Edition with Sandra Twinorio.